Today we're going to be talking about how you can stop putting your happy on hold. So many of us are like waiting to be happy. We're waiting for something to happen. We're waiting for the big promotion to happen. We're waiting for the big proposal to happen. We're waiting for the big relationship to happen. We're even waiting for the big healing da, da, to happen. We're waiting for something to happen outside of us in order for us to be happy now. It just seemed that throughout my life, it was always this putting my happiness on hold and waiting for something outside of me to happen or some major event to happen in my life in order for me to be happy. If you love learning about how to love the self, how to heal from codependency and narcissistic abuse, and how to move forward in your life no matter what's happened to you, please subscribe, hit, click the notification bell so you can be notified of the next upcoming video. Now, back to the video. Many of us are struggling with breakups. We're struggling with how to open our heart again how to try again, whether it's we've lost a business or we're ending one career or we're ending a relationship. And I have found throughout my life and the older I get that every time something happens in my life that I didn't expect, my heart space kind of like constricts. And that takes me out of the flow. So I wanted to do a video today that was all about how you can keep your heart open and be open to amazing things happening in your life in spite of the negative things that happen in your life. Learning to keep our heart open in spite of bad things that happen can be scary because when we put ourselves out there, we become vulnerable, right? Whether it's we put our heart into a business, we put our heart into an education, we put our heart into a friendship, we put our heart into helping our mom or our family or a marriage, and now it is no more. The relationship, whatever it is that we put our faith in, has exploded and it's no more. Our first instinct after something bad happens is to shut down. And this is a reflex. The ego wants to protect the inner child from feeling pain. So our first egoic instinct is to shut down and to push people away. And that is out of survival. So we can stop the emotional bleeding. Although this might be normal, we want to make sure that it doesn't stop us from getting back into the flow and keeping our heart space open to possibility again. We want to make sure that we're open to love and experiences and joy again. We want to make sure that in spite of disappointments, you stay in the flow of love and your heart space stays open to love so that you can attract amazing things in your life in spite of some of the crappy things that have happened in your life. Number one, give yourself time to heal, whatever it is whether it's you lost a promotion or you got fired or there's been some big breakup or something terrible has happened in your life, give yourself time to heal. If your leg was broken, you wouldn't join the New York City Marathon. You'd give yourself time to heal. You wouldn't beat yourself up because you couldn't run a marathon. You wouldn't do that because you know, well, my leg is broken. You already accept this idea that it takes time for my leg to heal. Well, we have to develop and adopt the same type of mindset when it comes to a disappointment, that when we put our heart and soul into something and it doesn't pan out, that there is going to be this period of grief where we're learning to let go and readjust to this new reality. When your brain gets accustomed to something like a relationship or a job experience or a house or a job or a relationship, whatever it is, you have neural pathways associated to that thing. Now, when that thing is no more, it's going to take time for your brain to develop new neural pathways for the next phase of your life. So give yourself time as your brain develops new pathways and as you develop a new routine. Number two, no matter what, do not judge how you feel through this process. Whether it's a move, whether it's a breakup, whether an animal that you love has passed away, whether it's a child going off to college, whatever this new transition is in your life, do not judge how you feel. Instead, do this. Observe your feelings. Allow them. Embrace them. Tell yourself it's okay to feel these feelings. Know that one day you'll be up, the next day you might be down. One day you might have a good day, the next day you might not have such a good day. Instead, journal about you, how you feel. I know journaling is the one thing. If I wake up and my head is in a ball of knots and my heart is all constricted, I need to journal. I need to find resolution. I need to get to a point where whatever is happening in my life, I process it in my brain to the point where I, where I finally get to understanding what I can control versus what I can't control. Ultimately, when I learn that I can't control something, it's where I suddenly feel a release and I say, okay, 
I can let this go. I'm not going to ruminate about this because this area of this situation is something that I just can't control. That doesn't mean you have to react to it, but it does mean that it's easier for you to keep your heart space open if you don't judge how you feel. Number three, really important, up your self-care. So oftentimes we get caught up in the routines of life. And when we're in a difficult work situation or in, in, we, blah, 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 or we are in a difficult relationship or something's going on with our kids, or maybe someone's you know, going through a rough time that we love, or maybe we're taking care of a sick spouse or a sick parent or a sick child, whatever. We get so caught up in what's happening outside of us that we forget to take care of ourselves. If you've neglected old friendships that were very, very comforting and nurturing, reconnect with your old friends. If it's been a really long time since you actually spent some money on yourself, spend some money on yourself. If it's a long time since you went to the dentist or you had a physical, if it's been a long time since you made yourself a wonderful, healthy meal, now is the time for you to up your self-care. Number four. Number four is, is amazing. And the older I get, the more I appreciate it and the more time I spend meditating about it and actually doing it. And number four is forgiveness. Really difficult to forgive when you have suffered from abandonment trauma, narcissistic abuse, and you've attracted difficult people into your life, or you've been raised by narcissistic parents, alcoholic parents, and you know the, you know the shtick. When you have been hurt by people who are supposed to protect you and love you, it can be really difficult to forgive. Part of that reason is because when we're not forgiving, we're holding on to anger. We know where we are. We feel safe. The anger is like armor. And right beyond that armor is that little part of us that is, why have you forsaken me? Like, why have you hurt me? You know, it's, it's the uh, inner core that's so soft and so tender and so raw and the anger protects us. Right. So when we have suffered a breakup or someone has abandoned us or some shift is happening in our outer world, that's making us feel unsafe and making feels, making things feel very unpredictable. It could be easy to get angry at the reason why this thing has happened, it could be the company is moving and you're angry. It could be that the person that you love is leaving you. It could be the people that own the house that you are renting from are selling it. Whatever is happening in your life that is challenging for you at the time, it could be really easy to default to anger. But I'm learning, like I said, the older I get that what is allowing me to keep my heart space open is forgiveness. Forgiveness is basically um, understanding that what is happening is happening and being willing to let go of any anger or animosity towards the person or the situation. Because you can be angry at a situation as well and anger is going to shut down your heart space. When I think about the times in my life where I have felt judged by people and then I judge the person back, or I was telling myself a story about a particular person and realizing that in those moments, I really wasn't being my best self, which is staying connected to my God self and asking for forgiveness for the times in my life where I wasn't coming from my God self and I was reinforcing a narrative that I didn't want, that I wasn't seeing people as the, or I wasn't seeing the God self in other people. We can feel justified in seeing lack in someone else who sees lack in us. And I think the higher we climb on the spiritual path, we realize that what we see outside of us is very oftentimes a reflection of what's happening inside of us. So when someone sees lack in us, we have to stop and ask ourselves, do I see lack in me? Because if there was no lack in me, I might not see you seeing lack in me. Being willing to forgive takes you to a whole new level. Being willing to forgive what happened doesn't mean you forget, but being willing to forgive means, you know what? I'm going to take all the negative energy that I have associated to this event, whatever it is, right? Everything that I cannot change and everything that I wish didn't happen in this situation and all the ickiness I feel, I'm willing to release it because when we hold on to the ickiness and what we can't change and anger and all of that stuff, and we roll around in it, what we're doing is we actually, we're carrying around bricks in our pocket. And when we say, I'm willing to let go, we're actually forgiving 
and we're releasing these bricks, we're releasing this negative energy, and our heart space can stay open. It's also really important that we learn to ask for forgiveness, even in meditation, right? We ask that however we have hurt another person, however we have added to a dynamic, we ask that the times in which we were unaware that we were unaware, the times in which we tried to hurt somebody with our words or our intentions, we ask for forgiveness, even in our own heart space. We can choose to understand that for whatever reason, reason the relationship has ended. We can choose to understand that for whatever reason, we no longer resonate with another person or this job or this house or whatever. We can choose to understand that other people have a right to move on and to do what they want with their life experience. And we can say namaste and we can accept it and we can actually forgive the situation even if the situation isn't what we want. That's staying open to love and that's keeping your heart space open to be happy. Number five, be happy now. I remember when I was studying the law of attraction and quantum mechanics and entanglement and I was really into heavy into psychology and trying to figure out how does this all fit? How does spirituality fit with science? Like, and neurology, how does this all fit? And I absolutely came to the understanding that I had been withholding happiness from myself, that I was living in lack, that I was focusing on what I didn't want instead of what I did want. And that neurologically and chemically and psychologically, vibrationally, I was streaming to the conscious field. Well, I was streaming to the matrix realities that I didn't want. And so what I began to do was understand I had to force myself to be happy now. And it didn't feel natural in the beginning. So how did I do that? So I remember going to work one morning thinking, I have to just pay attention to things that are lovely. So I would get in my Dodge minivan, my silver minivan, and I would go to work at five o'clock in the morning, freezing my butt off in the New York City winter. And I would say, Instead of, instead of complaining about, oh my God, it's so cold. I would say, I'm so thankful that I have a coat. I'm so thankful I have a coat. I'd get in the car and say, oh my God, the car started. I'm so thankful my car started. Some people don't have a car. I'm so thankful that I have a car. If I got a parking space, I'm, space, I'm so thankful I got a parking space. The gratitude was lending itself and allowing me to be happy. Milking a sense of gratitude and forcing it even was leading me towards being happy now. Everywhere my eyes turned, I tried to force myself to see the good in whatever was happening in front of me. It can be really, really hard to try to be happy when we are in the midst of grieving, when we are in the midst of a breakup, when we are in the midst of some really challenging times. But it's important to remember that we have the power to move ourselves forward. Now, that doesn't mean that we jump out of grief and we you know, berate ourselves for not being happy now. It just means that we add some spiritual tools to our spiritual toolbox so that we know that there's a process. We're not supposed to get stuck. We're supposed to always be evolving. Remember, we've come as spirits to evolve up. Don't wait for the next relationship to show up to be happy. Don't wait for the perfect set of circumstances to be happy. Don't wait till you make enough money to be happy. Don't wait till your boss says that, hey, you did a good job to be happy. Don't wait for the next promotion. Don't wait for the house. Don't wait for the car. Don't wait for your jeans, the size of your jeans to go down. Don't wait for your acne to clear up. Don't wait for the size of your hips to go down. Don't wait. Don't wait to be happy. If you can commit yourself to these five steps, if you know that there's a plan, there's a spiritual plan, If you know that at any time you can start moving up and you can start feeling better in spite of whatever challenges you have before you, you will absolutely find yourself feeling more happy and more in the flow than you ever imagined. The worst thing that you can do, especially if you're somebody who has never felt love, is to not love yourself. That's the worst thing that you can do because love is the cure of all things. When you love yourself, your cortisol levels will go down, your inflammation levels go down, you're suddenly feeling better, you look better, your skin is better, your body functions better. Love is the key to everything. People who love themselves do better in life. Learning to love yourself and learning to accept things that you cannot change helps you to be less reactive. You learn to let go of things that you can't control. So the worst thing that you can do, the worst thing that you can do is keep yourself away from the love from within. If you do anything today, love yourself. 
Find a way to remind yourself just how divine and magical you are. And use these five steps to help you stop putting your happiness on hold. My name is Lisa Romano. I am a best-selling author and meditation teacher on Insight Timer, and I'm also a life coach. I am the creator of the 12 Week Breaker Coaching Program that helps people heal from codependency, narcissistic abuse, and it teaches them how to return back to the self. If you'd like to learn more about me and the resources that I have available, including my membership site, then you can reach out at www.lisaaromano.com. And if you click the links below, you can actually listen to one of my books on audible.com for free. Thanks for watching everybody. And remember to love yourself, be happy, let go of what you can't control and focus on what makes you happy now because you are worth it and you are enough. Namaste everybody until next time.